You are already a multi-trillionaire. And every treasure you give here on earth is being stored up in heaven. There is a department of treasury in heaven. The Bible said that he's going to bless you a thousand times more even as you are, not even as you have. The reason why they can't, they get to a point where they can't receive is because their hearts are just little. Fact is, a lot of liars wear lipstick. The prosperity gospel is basically this in a nutshell. It's built off telling you how great you are, how great you can be, how great you will be just as soon as you start sowing a seed, just as soon as you start investing into the kingdom. They make the gospel seem like, or the church or Christianity seem as though it's an investment that you're going to get a rate of return or return on your investment. All you've got to do is to follow through, give, and just simply wait, have faith. And when they do it, when they come up with these schemes, they say some things that are just completely outlandish. Now someone is about to send you that million dollar check in the name of Jesus. You just simply need to be obedient, whether it's a hundred thousand, whether it's $10,000, and so what she said was, all you simply have to do is to be obedient and you will have that million dollar check coming in some form, some fashion. And what she uses is a good sales tactic. And that is to start off with having you suggesting that you give something and it's not a small amount. It's a large amount. Give a hundred thousand. Well, who's going to give that? I don't have a hundred thousand, but we'll give 10,000. Well, that's a lot also, but I could do, maybe I can do a little bit less, a thousand dollars. That's kind of the way they work this out. And, and you have got to right now become one of those pillars, become one of those people, whether it's the 10,000 or the thousand. And with all due respect, as great as that name is going to be left there, there's a greater name that's going to be written. Every treasure you give here on earth is being stored up in heaven. There is a department of treasury in heaven. Now listen what stupidity she's saying, and people aren't catching this. She says that there is a treasury in heaven. Your name is going to be reserved and written in heaven heaven. And notice the passage that she's looking at. Now, I know Mnuchin's over down here, but I'm telling you, there's a department of treasury in heaven that God is watching over everything you do. And you are storing up eternal treasure that will go so far beyond, I think, that we can even begin to imagine. So let's go and look at the passage that she brings up. This is Matthew 6, 20, but let's start in verse 19. Do not store for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but Store for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be. Well, she makes this out to be something having to do with finances. This is clearly not what Jesus is speaking about. As a matter of fact, Jesus goes on further as we drop down a little further. Verse 24, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to one and despise it. You cannot serve God and wealth. This is what she wants you to do. She wants you to serve wealth but she wants to disguise it as you serving God. And what she said, there's a department of treasury there. She's saying something that is completely stupid. And I mean stupid. I mean to be that blunt, stupid. And she wants to cover that in this fanciful idea that God is going to bless you here on, because what you did on earth in heaven, because you gave some money and you gave a lot, because what you're really doing is you're sowing money to reap a bountiful reward in heaven. That's completely not biblical at all. He said, everywhere you go, he said, I will, I will handpick 21 people in the building that will sow this $1,066 because of what I'm getting ready to turn around in their life. Now, there's probably nobody better at doing this than the prophetess pimp herself. That is why they buy them, because that's what she does. Everywhere she goes, she is going to say, the Lord has told me a certain amount of number of people to give a certain dollar amount. And even with that, what about the folks who can't? Well, if you can't give this amount, still be obedient to the Lord. The Lord is going to bless you. And he said to me, you don't have to beg. You don't have to plead because I said I earmarked them. And you in this building, come now and get this envelope out of my hand as quick as you can. Because he said, I'm getting ready to turn some things around for you like you have never seen. Like you have never seen. Now, it's always a certain amount of money, uh, and, which is kind of interesting one thousand sixty six dollars and she's she she hovers kind of around that that number maybe it's a thousand thirty three dollars or these different numbers so god has told someone to give a certain amount of money now we never see this in the bible not once we see god telling anyone to give a certain dollar amount like you have never seen one thousand sixty six dollars is nothing you can get money back but can you get around back 
Bring me some more because we're in an overflow. Hurry, bring me some more because we're in an overflow. You watch and see. You watch and see. I want you to mark the seed. The interesting thing is, every time she says this, she always has to come back into the exact same thing. Why on earth would someone who has come, come and gotten an envelope out of her hand in the past, and if they've gotten blessed, they would show up again and keep showing up. Wherever she goes, I'm going to go. Wherever she needs me to sow, I'm going to keep sowing. And there will be these testimonies of these people who constantly are getting blessed. But we don't see that. You can get money back. You can't get a moment back. Yes, Lord. He just said five more people are sitting here deciding, but you're not deciding about money. You're deciding about your future. So she puts it in terms to where what's more important, my future or this money. This money you can get back, but a moment you can't get back. And God has ordained it to be such. And if you do this now, be obedient. I promise you, mark my words, God is going to bless you. But we've heard the Bible speak about this. Paul says in Romans 16, 18, he says, for such men and women are slaves, not of the Lord Christ, but of their own appetites. That's clearly what she is. She is a feminine huckster who likes to hawk the Bible. She likes to give these biblical promises that are nowhere found in the Bible, but they are based off of not just her greed, but let's be clear, it's also based off of your greed. Because if you weren't that greedy, you wouldn't fall for these things, but you're desperate to get something. Let's just be honest. That's what it is. You are desperate to get something, so you'll fall for anything that you think or has a possibility to get you what you're looking for. Not God, but gold. Not God, but something um, much greater in your heart fame, wealth, whatever it is. And he says, these people, they have these, uh, uh, they, they serve or they're slaves, not to Christ, but their own appetites. And by their smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. That's you if you are there giving money to this person. It's interesting to me that people talk to you about money everywhere you go. And the only place you get mad about it's in church. No one has a problem with you talking about money in church or giving. That's not it. But when you put a, some sort of a, when you pressure the person, when you guilt them, or when you give some sort of financial incentive, therein lies the problem. And Joyce Meyer is one of the best at it. Is it that people will pay 60 and $75 to go to a concert? <laughs> Not think a thing about it, but when somebody's giving you life-changing word, well, they're just out to get your money there. They go talking about money again. <laughs> The last to be first and first to be last. If you want more money, you got to give away some of what you got. Problem is, that's not what that verse means. The, give away some of your money in order to get that. It's not, again, it's not an investment scheme, but they make it out to be that way. I mean, go ahead, you just go ahead and try to compute some of the stuff in your brain. You'll drive yourself crazy trying to figure it all out. You either get around to saying, look, I'm not trying to figure any of it out anymore. God, I just believe it. You said it. I believe it. So there's no need to even think about this. Don't think about this at all. As a matter of fact, why would you do that? If you do so, what you're doing is you're not exercising faith. You know, stingy people, the reason why they can't, they get to a point where they can't receive is because their hearts are just little. And the problem that you don't, the reason why you don't give more than what you've been giving is because you have, you are a stingy person and you have a little heart. And because you have a little heart, God is not going to bless you. There will be no abundance. There will be no overflow from heaven coming your way. Can I get about 10 of you to bring me $20? Just 10 of you. $20 that you don't need. Because we're not going to give it back to you. But just run up and... When you come and say, is that all? There are people like Cindy Trim who just, they have no business even even speaking, no, not let alone on the stage. While she's on stage, I don't know. But obviously people bring her in because they think they can use her to bring more funds into their church. And she does this little scheme where she gets tens of thousands of dollars in a, in a matter of moments. Now, I don't know if all that goes to her or how this works. Not totally sure, but she has, she's devised a scheme where she's asked people to give money, give money, give money. And then she turns around and does something. It's kind of a scheme. Look at how this works. I'm sorry to insult. Hey, 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 hey. I'm, I'm sorry to insult you all for just asking for 20. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Is that all? 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 Where's the hundred dollar crew? Is that all? So she's asked people to give them uh, $20. You're not going to give it back. Then some folks, a hundred dollars. 
Is that all? Is that all? Is that all? And then watch what she does. And it's it's a it's a mind trick because not only this, can this happen to this woman, but this can and will happen to you and for you. Just repeat one more time to the person on your left and the person on your right and just tell them something good is about to happen to you. The lady with the glasses, come here for a moment. You were expecting something. So that too can be you, but you've got to fix your mentality. You've got to change the way you think. As long as you have a limitation in your mind concerning what you're prepared to give, that same limitation will be in your mind with what you're prepared to get. Oh, that makes sense. That moves me. Uh, this little small mentality means that I can only receive a small amount. Think about the millionaires of the world. They have a, a large way of thinking. They think in grand terms, which is why they receive grand things. So let me bring them and use that, put it in the church, because I think that might resonate with people. And it does. You are already a multi-trillionaire. What are these people clapping for? There's no such thing as a multi-trillionaire on the planet. The Bible said that he's going to bless you a thousand times more even as you are, not even as you have. Did he say that? Really? Poverty does not bring honor and glory to God. When did we as Christians ever think that prosperity was such a bad word? No one thinks it's a bad word, but no one thinks also that poverty, being poor, is also a bad thing. Jesus, as a matter of fact, said, the poor you shall have with you always. But if you get folks in the in the mindset of thinking that it's OK to have have wealth, which it is, it is, which means it's also OK to go after it. Remember, the person that desires to be rich, that person is going to fall. That person is going to fall into a trap set by the devil, according to Paul. But listen to how she takes some scriptures and twists them. Like for some reason, Christians think that you get a badge of honor when you struggle. Sometimes they think, oh, here we go again, another prosperity preacher. Jesus says in John 15, verse 8, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Now, she's got her little bedazzled microphone, and maybe that's just keep you from thinking about what you just heard. Let's go to the passage and see how she twists the scripture. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Just as the father loves me, I also have loved you, abide in my love. Now, is this speaking about monetary fruit? No, this is the passage where he's speaking to the disciples that says if, that if you don't bear fruit and remain in me, you will be cut off. Now, I won't get into the entire issue about what he's speaking about, where this relates to eternal life and so forth, because it does. And so he tells him that he's ordained or appointed them to bear fruit and that their fruit will remain. But she takes this as this being financial. That is not at all what this is talking about. And it just takes a simple looking at the passage to understand that. But people are greedy. The reason why these people can exploit you like Paul says they will in their greed, they will they will exploit you. They will make merchandise of you. The reason why they can do that is only because you're greedy yourself, because you want to get money quickly uh, and you want to get it from some sort of way that you want to know that God is going to bless you. You want to have that hope. Well, let me tell you this. You shall have just like they you will have your reward. Is it OK to have money? Absolutely. But how you get it, as, as we say before, all money ain't good money. And if you're going to get money by being deceptive in the body, well, then I can promise you this. God will ultimately deal with you. And just because you see someone who can bat their eyelashes, who have lipstick on and hair and long hair and so forth, um, however they want to dress up this scheme, doesn't mean that you should listen to them. Go and take what you're hearing and compare it to the scriptures. Because every time you hear them preach about how God wants you to be blessed financially, go and notice the passage and how they twist it. <laughs> 